Well, hello there, it's Michael from Self Pub Nation, and in this video, I want to go over that most important skill, how to write a novel that does not suck and will actually sell. So you would like to write a novel that is Awesome, that is fantastic. But before you start pouring through your creative dream journal or sign up for that online creative writing masterclass that you that will cost you six thousand uh, dollars, realize that if you're going to write a novel, you might as well write one that actually makes you money and maybe even helps you kill your uh, your day job ever so slowly. So, in that spirit, here are three hopefully non-sucky tips for writing a novel that does not suck and will actually sell. Writing a novel that does not suck. Tip number one, everything starts with a kick-ass dilemma. Now, I know what all the blog posts and the back issues of Writer's Digest and all those Facebook rants tell you, and that is that writing a novel should always start with character. But how do I, how do I say this nicely? Um, that's all total crap. Well. Okay, not, not total crap, more like 42.4% crap, because while character is super important, focusing on it too much too early can lead to these really vivid and emotional and personal novels that nobody, not even your family, wants to read. Because, as the old axiom says, show, don't tell. And character is actually best shown not through physical appearance or traits or dialogue, or even the most personal thoughts of that character, but through dilemma. What do your characters do when forced to choose between two brutal, horrible choices, both of which totally suck? Say we've got a character, a lawyer, uh, who has just finished an appeal for his client who's on death row and who he believes is actually innocent. This lawyer, he's racing in his car to deliver the appeal within the 5 p.m. deadline, but unfortunately, he takes a turn too wide and he hits a homeless woman standing in the crosswalk. Does he stop? Does he pull over and see how she's doing? Even if it means his client may die, what he does in that moment will tell us more about his character than five pages of description, uh, 25 if, if Faulkner is writing it. It will tell us who he really is deep down at the core where, where real character is. Now your novel may not have stakes quite that high. Maybe you're writing a romance novel and the dilemma facing your hero is deciding between a relationship between the safe good guy manager of a stationery store and the passionate unstable hipster barista who works at the cafe around the corner. Or maybe you're writing a human drama story where your hero's big dilemma is standing up to her overbearing mother and carving out an identity of her own even at the risk of losing out on some inheritance. For all the swordplay and political intrigue. Uh, Hamlet is really about a character trying to do the scariest thing of all, resisting the expectations our parents put on us. And here's the really cool part. Nail down the dilemma and then you can tweak the character to match the dilemma. This will not only make your story much more powerful and focused, but it will also make every piece of book marketing you send out much more effective. Writing a novel that doesn't suck. Tip number two, make your character conflicts believable and your story worlds unbelievable. So one big mistake that would-be novelists make, and I made it for years, was to was to try to come up with these, these crazy, wild, fantastic situations for our characters that were full of drama and, and super high stakes, which sounds cool and it sounds like what you should do, especially when you're dreaming of New York Times bestseller lists, but it actually leads to fiction that feels artificial, hollow, and dishonest. That's because you don't really know the emotional terrain that these characters are experiencing in those scenes, and to compensate, you're reaching for things that you think you know about a situation situation, which unfortunately are cliches. The remedy for this is to instead ground your character situations in emotional terrain that you know really well, and then let the story world handle the heavy lifting of, of making everything big and visual and dramatic. For instance, say I want to write a novel about a lawyer starting up with a new law firm and finding out that the culture at the new law firm is not only devious and ruthless, but it's also controlling to the point of threatening to ruin you if you leave the firm. Kind of Yonsville, right? Except, what if I told Told you the firm is run by the mob and that leaving the firm means actually risking your life. Well, John Grisham drove that trope all the way to millionaire status, but he grounded it in the cutthroat lawyer world that he knew all too well. Or let's say I want to write a book about an orphan going to a prep school who, with the help of his friends, learns to become confident and take on the, the corrupt influences in the school, especially from former students who are now teachers. Before you get ready for your afternoon nap, what if I told you the book was set at Hogwarts and 
and that the boy was an all-powerful wizard taking on the very person who killed his parents. I know it sounds kind of crazy, but deep down, Harry Potter is really just a rite of passage story. It's a tale about a boy struggling with the heavy responsibility of having to grow up too fast with this deep down desire to just be part of a family. And this is what I believe gives the novel its heart, not uh, flying broomsticks. So as you write your novel, try to imbue it with as many uh, dilemmas and concerns and emotions that, that not only sound dramatic and interesting for the narrative, but are, are something that you that really resonate with you, that really are at your core. And then let the crazy story world do all the heavy lifting for you so you don't hurt your back. Writing a novel that doesn't suck, tip number three. You only learn by doing. If I could go back in a time machine, and if I could, I would definitely hope that a, a Huey Lewis song was playing in the background. I would grab 10 years ago me by the neck, and I would say, please do not worry about outlines and treatments and scene by scene breakdowns of your novel. The only way to learn the structure of writing a novel is writing a novel, not a class or a book or a magazine or even a video like the one you're watching. You really just have to kind of dig into your story and write some stuff that works and write a lot more stuff that doesn't work. And you keep rearranging that stuff until this magical thing called a story appears. And in a way, this is terrifying. I mean, believe me, I wish there was like this paint by numbers formula to follow, but each story has its own rhythm. It has its own internal geometry. Atonement, the novel, is a dense, layered narrative that builds slowly with these seemingly really ordinary everyday activities, but then they suddenly explode with these huge ramifications. Life of Pi is like this really strange, weird visual odyssey, which is filled with super rich symbolism and weird tree islands that will eat you. Gone Girl is the ultimate exercise in seeing how many huge emotional climaxes can someone fit in a book. And Jillian Flynn found, holy crap, I can fit a lot of them into it. And I'm pretty sure I can't be be absolutely sure I don't have a I don't have Jillian and, and the rest of them on my speed dial but I'm pretty sure that they didn't write from a very structured outline I'm almost positive they let the story take them where it needed to be taken so nail down your dilemma ground your novel in conflicts that resonate with you and story worlds that come out of your imagination and then just get started because as Mark Twain said the secret to getting ahead is getting started and if you can get started enough you might just write a book that can change lives including your own so if you if you've enjoyed this video, would you mind uh, giving us a, a like or a subscribe or a Facebook something, tweet, retweet, <laughs> whatever they call them down below. And if you would like access to my brand new seminar, Five Secrets to Making a Damn Good Living as a Writer, I've got a link below this video, selfpubnation.com forward slash five secrets. You can get totally free access there. I really hope to see you there. It's pretty cool. Pretty much thrown everything that I've learned about uh, making a living as a writer there. So I hope to see you there. But in case I don't, Please remember to write well, publish often, and do not let anybody, and that includes uh, $1,200 creative writing masterclasses, stand in your way.